and a sound check on the conference line. If any citizen want to sign in to the conference call, you can sign in at 877 or dial in at 877-309-2073. That access code is 590-380-589. We are open to the public for a maximum of 15 people. And we're good? Very good. Um, we're gonna go ahead and officially open uh, the public hearing to hear ordinance numbers 2021-09 and ordinance to approve the county's fiscal year 2021-2022 proposed operating budget. Um, at this time, I'm going to break these out one at a time. At this time, we will have our county attorney, Mr. Billy Jenkinson, come up and give some clarity on the ordinance. Thank you, Madam Supervisor, and good evening to all members of council. The final budget ordinance itself, I wanted to call your attention. It, it became apparent late last week that we needed to go ahead and obtain um, a tax anticipation note as we do every year. What we do is we borrow that money in anticipation of taxes to carry us to December, January period, and we pay it off in March. And this is just a method of keeping our books balanced. Now, a tax anticipation note typically takes three readings. However, if you put in a budget ordinance the authority to put it in a resolution, then it can be done by resolution and avoid a three reading ordinance which carries it downstream about a month and a half. So what we have done is this afternoon amend on page five, and the first thing that you will need to do if you find it acceptable is to make a motion to amend the budget from last reading, this for third reading, amend the ordinance, page five, paragraph two G has been added. Um, as you see, F provides for an, a tax anticipation note, but what G does is allows us to pass a separate resolution setting forth the details and the terms and do it by resolution. Now, if you find that satisfactory, we will, the first thing we will do once the third reading comes up is we will need a motion to amend the current draft of the ordinance to add paragraph G on page five. Any questions about that piece of it? Now, once we pass third reading, hopefully tonight, of the budget ordinance, you then have the authority to enact a resolution. And that resolution is on your agenda. And so the second thing we would ask you to do to consider from a budget standpoint is by this resolution, pass the resolution which will allow the supervisor and the financial staff to then uh, get with our bond council and, and me and we will go through that process of putting the bids out, the advertising, and hopefully by middle to the end of July we will have those funds available. So that is the process. Any questions? That's all I have. This is a public hearing and it is open for questions for anyone that is here as well as those that are online to um, discuss. This time, do we have any questions online? Or in house? Okay, um, our next item up for public hearing, and I'm gonna go ahead and do both of them, is ordinance number 2021-10, as well as ordinance number 2020-21-11. Um, 2010 um, reads an ordinance to provide for record and towing services operation, service operations, which are utilized by law enforcement in Williamsburg County and charges for such services. 2021-11 is an ordinance to provide for the sheltering and humane treatment of animals to provide penalties 
for ill treatment of cruelty of animals and to provide for the humane tethering of pets. We have our sheriff, um, Sheriff Gardner, in the building at this point to take any questions being asked um, by members of council or any of the public in reference to these two ordinances. Sir, if you'd like to come up and mention something about them. Yeah, so I think I kind of explained them the, uh, how y'all doing? Start Hello. there. But, uh, yeah, so I think I kind of explained them the uh, last go around. The record stuff is just to give us a, a, a concerted effort along with what the state's doing. So we all on the same page. It won't be somebody doing something different. It just makes it easier. It's accountability. Keeps the fees the same so you don't get the complaints or the IAs that say, hey, what's on? So it did this. You fact find it and say, well, it's just a misunderstanding. So I think that's a kind of self explanatory. The animal portion, we've had a great discussion. I think at this point, we just bring it to the public hearing is what we're doing with it. So that we can uh, go out and let your constituents understand, you know, one of the big issues that we talked about, and understandably so, is the hunting portion of this. But again, does not apply to hunting. We're not trying to target hunting dogs. We get the concept there. But again, so people will understand better what we're doing. Um, we find ourselves in a situation where we, we're in a lawsuit issue and still there. Um, cannot discuss any of that, but I think a lot of this is what helps to correct that so that we don't find ourselves traveling down that road again. Okay? Any, any questions? All right. Thank you all for your time. Marketing media staff, do we have any questions from our citizens that may be online or anyone that's in-house right now, if you have any questions? Come on up to the um, podium and please identify yourself and the district in which you live in. Good evening to all. First name Isaac, last name Taft. Um, councilman Woods is my councilman. And this question is for the sheriff on that issue concerning the animal cruelty. I live in a rural area. I have dogs and stuff coming around and doing all type of stuff to my property. Okay, now, if I fire at them and don't hit them, will I be charged? <laughs> That's my question, okay? I'm not gonna have them to come up tearing my stuff and I, and I get them off, I mean, you know, I ain't gonna run at them at a stick, I'm going at them from a distance. <laughs> so I just wanna know, does that cover that area for cruelty? Thank you. <laughs> Hey, so, so you covering a lot in that. Um, <laughs> we won't get into a Billy Opportunity in Jeopardy. We'll leave that alone. That's a legal question. I'd say you need to talk to your attorney. <laughs> but uh, yes, it, yes, it does. You know, the problem is, and that's the issue we talked about, is dogs don't know boundary lines, and that's the biggest thing we have all the time. But what it does do is hold you accountable for your animal so that we don't find someone else's dog at your property tearing up stuff, eating your chickens or whatever it may be, um, your garbage can, pulling garbage out your backyard. If that's my dog that did that, then now I can hold Steve accountable for doing what he's doing on your property because I should be putting the measures in place to make sure my dog doesn't go over into your yard and do damage. So that's what it does. Does that answer that question? Part of it because right. there's a lot of stray dogs in my area. Yeah, I got you. So, so when it comes to stray animals or animals that you see, in the other portion, I guess, is what you asked about, stray animals. Yes. So we don't know who the owner is. We can't define that. Then at that point, call animal control and get them to come out and deal with the dog issue. Don't place yourself in a situation that you don't have to place yourself in. If you can go back in your house, go back in your house. If you feel that that dog is threatening your safety, you have to make that decision. I can't stand here and tell anyone in there when to make that decision. That's something that you independently have to make okay. and be able to legitimately say, this is why I did that. So in other words, no talking about <laughs> no, 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 no target practice on that. That's correct. <laughs> Does that finish an answer? Yes, it does. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Thank you. Are there any other questions that may have came in from the public? Okay. Um, we also have for public hearing ordinance number 2021-12, an ordinance of Waynesburg County, South Carolina, approving an agreement for the enlargement of a joint county industrial park by and between Georgetown County, South Carolina, and Williamsburg County, South Carolina, and other matters uh, related to the foregoing. Do we have any uh, questions regarding this ordinance? None. Okay. Any inside the building? 
None. If there are no other questions or any other comments regarding these issues that have been set forth by the public hearing, um, we're going to bring this public hearing to a close. Uh, and we are also going to begin at this time our regularly scheduled council meeting. Um, we're going to call it to order and the invocation will be delivered by Councilman Miller. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this opportunity to come together and discuss our business for Williamsburg County. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to guide our hearts and our mind that those decisions made tonight will be in the best interest of our county and our citizens. We ask these questions in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Um, we're also... Uh, we need uh, approval of the minutes for the regularly scheduled council meeting that was held May 3rd. Do you all have an opportunity to receive your minutes? And if so, are we ready to vote? So we need a motion for approval. Motion for approval, Madam Supervisor. Second. It's been properly motion and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of approval of the minutes for the regularly scheduled council meeting that was held May 3rd, please signify by raising your hand. Opposers the same. The motion is carried. Our next order of business is, I uh, believe, uh, is ordinance for third reading and approval of ordinance number 2021-09, an ordinance to approve the Winsburg County's fiscal year 2021-2022 proposed operating budget. Mr. Billy. Thank you, Madam Supervisor. It would be appropriate if a member of council is so inclined to make a motion to amend the ordinance, page five, section, to add section 2G, authorizing the council to enter into a resolution um, to borrow money on the, by, by method of a tax anticipation. Note is described in the um, preceding section. Okay, hold on for one moment. Let me just read something. Um, everything he said and more, um, I just want to let um, members of council know as well, as well as the public know, we did have some issues during the last, um, the second reading of the budget. Some new things were introduced and we had to address those issues. And pretty much where we are is like pretty much most of the nation. We have passed over our one year mark in response to the unprecedented COVID-19 public health emergency and economic crisis. The pandemic has demanded far more than the county's team and community than ever imagined. But the pandemic has made us more resilient in Williamsburg County. And to the credit and to credit our department heads, our elected officials and appointed officials and employees, Williamsburg County has performed admirably in these difficult situations created by the pandemic. The proposed 2021-2022 budget is based on a leaner budget established during an earlier phase of COVID-19. Though the cost savings measures implemented by the county in 2020 to keep expenditures in check and to maintain the sufficient workforce to provide the best possible services to our citizens. Although this budget was difficult to develop without the cuts in service, the proposed budget that I am presenting to you provide adequate funding for the county to continue the same level of services and to continue operating. However, this budget does not address some of the critical revenues generated issues generating issues for the county to remain fiscally solvent and stable earlier on the budget process we were once again challenged by a demand for the county services that far are far are exceeded our available revenue sources a situation that is even more pronounced after many years of no increase in taxes or fees eventually the increases in the operating and unavoidable costs such as our health care insurance premiums, the county's retirement contribution rates, and our contractual services will result in a budget gap if not addressed immediately. Although the American Rescue Plan signed by President Biden in March 1, 2021 presents a great opportunity for our county to sustain its response to COVID-19 emergency and to strengthen our ability to address needs identified in the American Rescue Plan. These funds are one-time and non-reoccurring and must be used according to the guidelines established by the American Rescue Plan Act. 
Looking forward, we recognize that many of our long-term budgetary issues may require significant investments by the county and possibly implementing implementation of a multi-year funding approach to address our budgetary issues. Therefore, it is recommended that the balanced budget for 2021-2022 fiscal year without increases in taxes and fees be approved by our council members. So we need a motion or a motion for what Billy said. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Supervisor, I'd like to make a motion to amend the second reading of budget number uh, 2021 to add in the item on page five, tax anticipation note, uh, the assurance of the tax anticipation note up to three point five million county council will adopt a separate resolution setting for the details in terms of the tax anticipation note to issue the tax anticipation note prior to ensuing the tax anticipation note second any discussion all those in favor of third reading and approval of the ordinance 2021-09 with the inserted items, please signify by raising your hand. Opposers the same. Next order of business is third reading of ordinance number 2021-10, an ordinance providing for the wrecker and towing service operation, operations, which are utilized by law enforcement in Williamsburg County and the charges for such services. <clears throat> make sure this is done right um basically what he's told us is that we had to vote on the amendment so we've already voted on the amendment is that correct yeah. all right the next thing we need to do is vote on the actual ordinance separate okay so third reading of the ordinance 2021-09 in addition to what we've already voted on which approves the fiscal year's budget um, we need a motion for third reading and approval of that so move second Okay, so what, we, 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 just as far as us trying to make sure we keep it in line, we just voted on the, with him inserting all of this, that was the amendment portion of it? Amendment by council. Mm-hmm. Right. Once that's voted on, then we vote on the amended ordinance. All right, amended ordinance for third reading. You just said, but you, what you just said, he did the, he already did the insert. He inserted um, page five, paragraph G. That was his motion. We did. Did that. We did, did bit. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. I know. That's why I'm like, let me make sure I got this all right. Okay, so now we need to just vote on third reading of the ordinance with the inserts in it, yeah. correct? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. very good. Third reading of ordinance number 2021-09 with inserts in it. Um, what is the pleasure of council? We need a motion. Motion. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of third reading of ordinance number 2021-09 please signify by raising your hand. Opposers the same. I'm hoping that was done right. But we'll, um, I think we got it all, all of it in, all of it in at some point. All right. So our next order of business again is third reading of ordinance number 2021-10, an ordinance providing for the record and towing service operations, which are utilized by law enforcement in Williamsburg County and charges for such services. We need a motion for third reading and approval. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, 
All those in favor of third in third reading and final approval of ordinance number 2021-10, please signify by raising your hand. Opposers, the same. The motion is carried. Next order of business is second reading of ordinance number 2021-12. An ordinance of uh, Williamsburg County, South Carolina, approving an agreement for the enlargement of the joint county industrial park by and between Georgetown County, South Carolina and Williamsburg County, South Carolina and other matters related to the foregoing. What's the pleasure of council for second reading? So moved. Second. Probably moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of second reading of ordinance number 2021-12, please signify by raising your hand. Opposers the same. Motion is carried. All right, Mr. Billy, so this is just the resolution for it, is that correct? <coughs> okay. Um, we're gonna, next section is in resolutions and we're looking at resolution number 2021-09, a resolution to provide, providing for the issuance and sale of a tax anticipation note in the amount of 3.5 million for Williamsburg County for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2021 and ending June 30th, 2022. Um, thereafter referred to as fiscal year 2021-2022. The pleasure of council. Motion to approve and adopt resolution. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approval and adoption of resolution number 2021-09, please signify by raising your hand. Opposers, the same. Motion is carried. Um, under the supervisor's report, uh, Ms. Erin Pate is not here today. So what I'm going to do, um, because we were gonna be discussing something in an executive session, which did not necessarily need to be addressed in executive session. So we're gonna move um, the speaker, which is Mr. Will Askins in now in the spot of Ms. Erin Pate, and she will come later on um, next council meeting or so to deliver her um, information regarding Cypress preservation. Come on up, Mr. Askins. Well, Council, um, my name is William Askins. A lot of y'all know me, and for those who don't, I work at, with Eastern Engineering. We've worked with the county for the past 20 years, um, helping with the infrastructure needs for water and sewer and building out the water and sewer system. Um, I've come before y'all today to let y'all know about the current opportunities for funding rural infrastructure, especially given that the Biden administration is, pus is trying to push out a lot of funding for that um, and to take any questions y'all might have. Um, now, two of the main questions, questions I usually get asked is how do we fund the infrastructure and also um, how fast can we get this going? So the short answer for the, the funding part is it's unique to each, each project, but it basically goes, we work with the USDA or other federal and state agencies to figure out how best to fund it so it's sustainable for the county itself because none of these agencies want to you know, put too much debt onto you that you can't handle, so they make sure they they do it in other ways that you keep going with. Um, so each one's a little unique, each one's a little different, and currently the situation in the funding area is very favorable for Williamsburg County. That's not only grants coming from the federal administration, but that's also the uh, the loans that they allow. Currently the, the loans are roughly at 1%, which is below the inflation rate. And this is probably gonna last about another year, so time is short. But what that means is any money borrowed to do these projects is actually a negative interest rate. So that means over time, you actually are paying less than what you borrowed. So it's a pretty unique situation. And given you know that we're talking about the Federal Reserve and stuff, but, but uh, we anticipate this ending in about a year or two, so a very short window. Um, the other question I usually get asked a lot is, you know, how fast can we get these projects going, you know, from inception to actually constructing them? From conception to actually getting shovels in the ground is usually about two years, 18 months to two years. You know, it depends on the federal agencies and how fast they can help us move and all that. But in general, that's the time frame. So 
uh, it seems like a long time, but in the infrastructure world, that's kind of just what's required up front in terms of time-wise. Um, so those are two main questions I usually get asked, and um, I want to see what other questions y'all might have for me to answer it for your specific districts or overall. Um, currently, I, I know in District 2, we still have about 267 houses that still need access to water. And so we know <coughs> roughly that it's going to cost around $7 million to do so. So how much loan to grant ratio are they offering right now, or do you know? So that's a, that a unique question, but I can talk in general terms. Um, so historically, Williamsburg County, I think, has gotten between 40 to 60% in, in grants. The grant level for Williamsburg County has actually gotten a little lower over the years, but that's more a, of a product of the system's growing. It's more mature now, so it can actually handle a little bit more of the debt load, so they, they give less grants for it. But um, in general, 40% is about what we've been seeing lately. That's just straight up from USDA itself. Now, there's other agencies we try to pair it with also, so it, it will depend on your area. The further apart the houses are, usually you try to go for more grant money because it's less revenue per mile of pipe, so to speak. So in your area, I'd probably say, you know, you probably hit three to four million dollars in grant, you know, in general speaking. Um, and uh, so I don't know what the infrastructure bill Biden has planned will do. That's kind of like the cherry on top in, in my terms. So it could actually be more than that, but that's not something, you know, at this point we can count on, so to speak. But um, I can get it with you and give you a little bit more detail later on. Please do. Yes, sir. Mr. Askins, in regard to the uh, Mazan water project. Yes, sir. I know in the last few months I saw the, so I put the well down out at the uh, fire station. Could you just give the citizens an update on where we are with regards to that project? project? With the Mazan water project? Yes, sir. Where are we at on that right now? So we've got some lines laid. We've gotten the, I think the pipe or the drill guy's been there. So one thing that's been holding it up, and I don't know if y'all follow the news much, but the steel prices have skyrocketed absolutely insanely. You know, we've seen it with lumber, but especially steel. So the tank guy from the last time I checked, he's been trying to, I guess, delay building towards more the end of the project lifespan and in hopes of the steel prices coming down so it doesn't blow the budget out, so to speak, or, you know, negatively impact it. So he's still got a time frame that we gave him, you know, that he can fit it into. So he's trying to use up some of the time now in the hopes that it comes down. So you'll probably start seeing the, the tank itself coming up within the next six, six to nine months, hopefully. Um, and like I said, I believe most of the pipes already been laid. Um, we've had some discussions i'm not sure mr mixon probably fill you in more but um about um the pipes that we already have in that are connected to the king street system we might actually be able to go ahead and charge some of those like you know get water flowing through them from king street system in, as a temporary solution until the tank and well are fully in so there is a, a decent odds that we can actually go ahead and get some people own you know own the water right now um he could probably answer that question better than i can though what I'm hearing is we still within budget and we still got time. Yes, sir. Correct. Okay. Yes, sir. We gave them a long amount of time just for y'all's general knowledge because we had three different types of contractors. It's a, it was a well guy, it's a skater guy, it's a tank guy, and it's a pipe in the ground guy. So those people working all around each other can really mess things up. So we try to give them enough time so they can do their part, move away, and then let somebody else come in and, and you know do it. Kind of like you don't have a guy roofing at the same time. Somebody's pouring the foundation kind of thing. So they got they have a longer time frame, but they they are still within their time. Yes, sir. Mr. Haskin, uh, I s from looking at the project, I saw the uh, Mazon project has a estimated uh, completion date of uh, in 22, but with the Trio project, there was undetermined. Is there a problem with that? Um, not that I know of. I believe they're actually don't quote me on this, but I believe they're starting to do the connections themselves in some parts. If not, already haven't finished some. Um, I think the pipes have largely been put in the ground. Um, connections usually come next, you know, actually connecting up to the houses and charging the lines up. Um, and I believe the next phase will be the Earl project, which I'm not sure the, the start date. I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be a little bit later this year. 
which will then fill out the rest of the original project scope of the trial Earl. And if I'm not mistaken, the Earl, Earl, Earl area is where that um, mining complex yeah. is supposed to be. Yes. So I understand the, there's probably more of a necessity for speed, you know, going forward on that one. Um, uh, so uh, the, the, the trial project, any idea of July, August, or, you know, because this is a constant question I get, when are we, yes, sir. you know, I can um, I can get back to you on that. Please one. Give, do. Give you a firm one, so I'm just not telling Please you. Please do. Tell you. Well, I only just just an an estimated date. Yes, sir. I can get okay. that for you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah, William. I just wanted to say that the the, the citizens and the residents in the Mazon area, yes, sir. the one that's on that water line project, they're very excited. Uh, they, they they've seen something be, beginning to happen now, and they call me almost on a daily basis and. All of them, they're very, very excited. Even some of the ones that is not on the on on the online, they're saying now they wish they had her. But um, you know, so of course, some of them opted; they didn't want to get on. So now they're saying they wish they had done it. But it's, yes, it's water under the bridge now. That's one thing we see we've seen on every project we've done in Waynesburg County. Like you initially have, you know, let's say half the area sign up initially. Once you start putting the pipes in the ground, everybody in their grandma comes out. They're like, oh, you know, y'all actually did this. And now they're starting to want the water, want the hookups and all that. So it's, it's kind of frustrating up front, but it's nice to see on the back end that everybody, you know, once they see the progress, I guess it's like most things in life, they see the progress and they'll start adding on coming in. So, um, so I'm glad to see we got them riled up in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? And uh, to let everybody know, I'll be contacting y'all individually about the maps I gave y'all, because one thing we need to go need to know going forward is for specific areas, you know, we got some in there that we've already known that, you know, this area wants water, yada, yada. But to see if y'all have any other areas that have asked for it, that way we can get it in there now, because later on we can cut it out if we have to for budget reasons, but to put it in later is a very hard process. So we try to get it all up front. That way, you know, we're ahead of the ball game. But um, well, I appreciate the opportunity, y'all, and no other questions. All right. Thank y'all. Also, members of council, bear in mind that we, are, we want to take full advantage of any of the opportunities that have been afforded to us by the American Rescue Plan Act. So that's another reason why we want to start at least getting these projects, you know, shovel ready. So when the funding is released, then we will be able to take care of it, um, utilizing as much, as much of a grant funding as we possibly can. So he will be reaching out real soon. Um, the next items that I, I need to discuss with members of council um, is under the supervisor's report. I um, wanted to report to you all that we are no longer under a state of emergency. So we are resuming back to normal. So Williamsburg County is moving from obviously a re more of a response phase to now a mitigation and recovery phase from COVID-19, the impact of COVID-19. Um, also, in, I handed you out just another copy of the community buildings reopening and what that actually looks like for us. One of the things we really need to discuss in um, pretty, um, again, these lists were given out some time ago, but we really need to address the issue of the changing of the fees. Um, the buildings are scheduled to reopen in the next week. Um, we will start taking uh, rentals, or uh, I should say appointments for rentals, um, bookings and things like that next week. So we really need you all to look over the funding schedule. Um, again, they went through probably pre-COVID and looked at all the facilities, saw that our funding charts were not uniform with one another. So we went through and got them more uniform for the size and type of the facilities. So this makes it a lot more uh, fair for those running the various buildings. So we will give another next council meeting. We need to vote on the changes of the fees. Um, the applications are very similar. However, we added some things in there in reference to COVID, um, especially under the waiver. Um, all those who were working the events have been notified that all money exchanges will happen at the recreation facility. They will be the collector of all money and booking all 
um, events through that uh, that area, and the use of the and the cost of what the rental is will go back into the person's work in those events in the form of a check. So does anyone have any questions about how the reopening of the community buildings will take place? Madam Supervisor, when did you say we begin to um, take requests for buildings again? Next week. Next week. Mm -hmm. We are waiting on a few air purifiers to come in. And then once we get those in place, um, I think we're ready to go. Any other questions regarding the opening of community buildings? Yes. Is Reopenings. Uh, mm -hmm. Will there be a um, limited occupancy or will it be for the occupancy of what the building currently is right now? What it is currently now. Awesome. Mm -hmm. We didn't change the occupancy level. With everything opening back up, um, it's very difficult for us to even have a reason to put too many restrictions on things. Obviously, we know we don't want to have a thousand people in there <laughs> in a building that's only there to hold 300. But yeah. we will make sure that we talk to them about that. And there is a waiver that they must sign in order to occupy those facilities to even be involved in the facility to be um, to even attend those events in those facilities so it'll be on the persons that renting it that's their responsibility to ensure that everyone practices safe practices we will have signage but we will not we're kind of taking our hands off of it now and allowing the citizens to determine their their fate I haven't had the opportunity to read all of this but mm -hmm. just a quick is there, uh, some of the bigger buildings are we going to require security Depends on what it's for. If they're serving alcohol in those facilities, obviously, yes, we will. They will have to get a permit, and they will also have to make the request to the sheriff's office. But at this time, there is only two buildings that are allowed to even serve alcohol, so you all would have to make that change as well. That's the recovery center, um, the recreation, and the recreation center. Yes. Are these prices written in stone? So you all may um, determine, that's why I gave them to you all, so you can decide if these prices are feasible. For next meeting? Yes, sir. For next meeting? Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that is next Tuesday? Yes. So any, any changes or suggestions we have, just submit them to you? Yes. And please bear in mind, these, some of these costs, costs have been um, increased due to the fact that we're having to pay added expenses in keeping the buildings clean. It is our responsibility as county government that we do maintain cleanliness in the facilities. Um, if you look at it, hotels as well as everything else has gone up and they have tacked on extra fees for keeping facilities and, and rooms clean. We should not be treated any differently. Any questions regarding community buildings? None? All right, let me move to the next section, which um, I, I really need um, everyone to really hear what we're saying because this is so important to us and we wanna make sure we get it right on the first try. Um, currently, you all have been hearing a lot about um, funding sources. It's been in our, our community, in our county newsletters, as well as all over the place. Right now, they are talking about, and there's three pots of money that has been talked about over the last couple days. One of those obviously include the Coronavirus State and Local Recovery Fund, um, which designated funds that were under the American Rescue Plan Act, which was, again, what was um, just recently introduced by President um, Biden. The next area was the CARES Act, which the CARES Act funding source was basically um, also funding that came down in which we received $1.3 million. That was more, that funding source was more towards the response of COVID-19. So again, and that expiration for that particular pot of money has expired. Um, also, there is FEMA's d disaster number 4492. We have submitted three projects for that. There are stipulations in those, in those, um, in that FEMA um, PA requirement that tells us what we can spend it on and what we cannot spend it on. But again, we have submitted three projects and are anxiously waiting 
the final review of those projects. So more importantly, what I'm going to affectionately kind of name as the CSLRF fund, which is the coronavirus virus, local government, state and local recovery fund. The county received its first trench of $2.9 million, $2.9, $2,949,314. We will get the other portion sometime within the next 12 months. But that is what our first, we received it, it's in the bank right now. We have until 2024 to incur all expenses related to this particular um, funding source. Um, currently, we have introduced 17 projects identified for which a copy was sent to you all prior to Memorial Day weekend, and then again today as to the 17 projects. Every single project in the that was introduced to you all address every single concern or every single objective that was mentioned in this. There are four objectives to this funding source, four. And one, the first one is to support ur urgent COVID-19 response efforts. The second is to replace lost public sector revenue. The third is to support immediate economic stabil stabilization for households and businesses and to address the systematic public health and economic challenges in, um, in a particular county. Again, all of these have to align with the objectives. Now, there is no ability for the county to have a rainy day money. This initiative was basically put out to help us to stimulate the economy. We cannot hold on to any of these funds and use it for another time. They are very specific in nature. There is a book for which if any of you would like to go through it, that's this thick, okay? If you wanna go through it and pick out anything you wanna pick out in here, as long as it's dealing with the COVID-related rela COVID issues. But I welcome you, myself and Ms. Elizabeth Nelson have gone through this book and it is now considered our second Bible. So we know this book from, from top to bottom. So trust me, whatever we put on this initiatives is, has been well vetted out. Can you get a park? No, unless that park is related to COVID-19 or the prevention of COVID-19. Um, can you use it for other sources? Again, like I say, one of those books is 171 pages long. You are welcome to go through it. In fact, you can have this copy of it um, to, to review it. Um, there are the projects that were submitted to you all dealt with recycling center buildings. You will find that information on, the pa on page 60 of the interim um, an interim report for the American Rescue Plan or the uh, coronavirus state and local government funding. Also a affordable housing plan in which we plan on investing a million dollars in affordable housing. We're leveraging that funding source towards the ability for us to build more houses in our county that are affordable to our citizens. And notice I didn't say low income all the way, I said affordable. Um, also employee spending on a, more than 50% of their time on COVID relief efforts is a project that we will be working on. Also premium pay for essential workers, ongoing COVID expenses, governmental improvement for reopening control access devices that need to be placed in all county facility, facilities. A vaccine incentive for those who have not taken a vaccine in an effort to get more people, specifically more young people to take the vaccine as well as the hospital needed a piece of equipment to increase their ability to provide services to our citizens. Currently right now, we do not have a mammogram machine in Williamsburg County. This would allow the hospital to make this purchase and allow that services to stay in house in Williamsburg County. Um, also survivor benefits, which will allow us to look um, to shed some um, understanding and some compassion for those who have lost loved ones during COVID-19. Um, we have addressed the issue of lost revenue. Again, lost revenue, even though we say it was lost revenue, you still have to spend the loss, the revenue that you lost. Um, also an increase in broadband com for community buildings so that in the event children may not have Wi-Fi in their, in their homes at this time. There are also programs out there that have been identified that can assist in that. 
but for the most part are community buildings in which we have our senior population going in and in some of these some of these community buildings buildings they have tutoring and various other things in them so we included something in there to help us get broadband broadband capability on our community buildings um, also an incentive program for new hires as you all know is a very difficult task to bring in new employees largely because people at this point they don't feel the need at, right now to work so to have an incentive program to be able to recruit good um, qualified people is important for us again each of these initiatives that I am naming they have page numbers that are assigned to them in the interim report so you can go back and look for them um, also reinstatement of some critical positions that we have in our county that we had to take out due to the budget shortfalls also premium pay for our funeral home workers as well as digital signing to help us relay messages to our citizens and also the telework technology which includes our new software system that we purchased um, recently that will allow us to be able to not only work in the buildings but also be able to work remotely um, so that's pretty much where the focus was was to touch every single area in here and not only look at our districts for what we could do for our districts but what we can do for our citizens as a whole so that's what the concept was for however um, if you have any questions about how they were selected why they were selected feel free to ask and I am here to offer you an answer and I will gladly take your request and go through this nice big book to see if those things can be covered because unfortunately um, it's not Williamsburg County Council that's on the hook for these fundings to be spent appropriately it's Dr. Tiffany Wright considering I had to submit all of my personal information to get the funding for our county does anyone have any questions Uh, supervisor, I think it's an amazing list. Um, you covered affordable housing, which is very important to me. And I'm glad that it does not just limit it to um, a certain income. Because as you know, um, there are a lot of professionals that are moving here, can't find a place to stay, no place to rent. Um, right now, do we have some type of game plan on what we're looking for as far as providing that type of housing? Yes, we have. So I have solicited a organization, and that is all they deal with is that affordable housing piece they have been brought on from um, brought on with Berkeley County um, and very Anderson County various other counties and they are going to be working with us to determine a plan as to how we're going to move forward this is in short order this is not something that's going to happen next year immediately once we secure a contract with them they will begin sending out the RFPs to get builders into our county but it will definitely have to be utilized before 2024 so we could we Heard. with that being said we could see some housing coming up for persons who may not qualify for like section 8 vouchers and things of that nature yes then my other question was the uh, digital digital signage you know I love marketing I'm just curious as to where that will go one of the places um, initially and I still have to get some some more clarity but one of the places we wanted to go there comes in two folds to get portable signage done um, so that we can take them around to various locations whether we're doing vaccine sites whether we're doing testing sites to relay that information to the citizens or relay information to them that's going to be pertinent to COVID response or mitigation efforts so we have a portable solution that will help and we also have a solution that um, we would like to find out if we could talk to the town of King Street and the sign that's outside of the building in front of the PSA building was meant to be a digital sign and I don't know if we ran out of money when we were building a building so hopefully to get that changed into a digital sign I think that might be a zoning issue it that we be. just have to address with the right. town exactly <laughs> Madam Supervisor uh, uh, along the affordable housing uh, do we have the do we own the property now to maybe consider something like that or do we have can we purchase with that money so the ideal is to utilize existing county owned property mm -hmm. um, that we have to start with that'll start us off because we do have a lot of property out there that the county does own and we really want to get those up to speed obviously or utilize them so that they don't become nu nuisance 
um, locations like some of them have become. So um, that is the plan. Start there. Thank you. Um, Madam Supervisor, do I understand you uh, correct to say in hiring new people mm -hmm. in regards to folks that were released, I guess, uh, in regards to COVID, is that correct? Yes, sir. Or is there a plan in place once this money expires to continue um, paying that staff? Or are they going to be temporary? Or how does that work? So um, the one person that we need to bring back is a truck driver. That's where our re reinstatement is for. We need one truck driver. So that salary has been set out for the next three years. And then after that point, we are hoping that we are in a better position. If not, then, of course, as we've done in the past, we will, um, you know, uh, lay folks off. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That was a good question. Any other questions? Nope. Okay. Um, so hearing none. Good evening, uh, Madam Survivor, Member of Council. This is basically just an FYI for you council persons. And I'm speaking to everybody for council full because he will call me personally and I know he doesn't probably have to get this. But today we started the Local Help for South Carolina State Plus. That is a program that the state has set aside money to help with back rent and back utilities. There are a few stipulations that your constituents may call you and ask you, and I just want to give you a brief synopsis of it. Number one, it, all of the, your rent has to be COVID-related and your, your utilities, the back utilities have to be COVID-related. They can go back as far as 12 months in back rent and for ahead as much as three months if you see that you're still financially unstable. Um, it is only for renters. If you own your own home, you do not qualify. So if they add, if you should get a question that says, you know, can I apply, can, do I can apply? Your question to them is, do you own your home or do you rent? If you own the home, you're out of the program. There, there's $272 million and it's on a first come, first served basis. So <clears throat> I encourage you to encourage your constituents that they call to visit the website, which is South Carolina Plus, stayplus.com they will answer any and all questions. And if you feel that you need help locally, which the, the supervisor has provided, you can call us and we'll help. But the main thing is that you have to be eligible by way of a renter. You can have 12 months rent paid and three months ahead. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. that's just an FYI it, for you all. Yeah, is this uh, uh, for rent only? What about utilities? Does this cover yes. utilities? Yes, yes. So if you own the house, but you, you don't qualify. You don't qualify for, for even the utility? No. All right. Thank you. Is there a cap on how much here. each individual could qualify for? There, none has been stated. What happens, the cap is 12 months in the rears and three months possibly in the future. And the uh, landlord gets involved and lets, you, lets SC know just how much your back rent is. SCE and Duke, whomever, they let you know how much you're... You, let them know how much your utilities are. But the application process, you have to go through it, lots and lots and lots of documentation. Okay. But the funds are available. To my knowledge, there is not a cap to answer your question. Okay, all right. Okay, any other questions? That was just left FYI for you, because I know your constituents call you and the program is rather new. So you have those, a few of those little tip points to tell them before they come to us, if necessary. And they can come to you to help to help out or come to the county? Yes, they can call so and can they can also visit uh, the, uh, at uh, Emergency Management Division, 2086 Thurgood Marshall Avenue. Uh -huh. They can call and we set up an appointment for you and, or you can do it over the phone. But I don't encourage over the phone, but we will do it because it's so time consuming. You know, if you have five people in your ho household, all five of them must be mentioned, and the income of all of them, or whether they're students or whatever. It, it's an arduous task because they're giving you money, so they want to make sure that you're worthy of it. Yeah, you know, we don't mind doing it, but it, it is lengthy. Another question. To, to uh, minimize the time that they have to spend with you, is there like some type of checklist to give them or tell them where they can find a checklist of items that they need to bring with them? If they call the website or, or log on, yes. Okay. Uh -huh. What's the website address again? It is SC 
plus, no, I'm sorry, sc.stateplus.com. I want to, but I don't remember what they are. Three five five eight nine seven zero. And oh, three five four nine three. Those are local ones. Yeah, I thought you put the actual. I know, right? That's yeah. what I thought. It's like we know those. Yeah. Yes. But if you can call either, any one of those, and we can give you the one for the state if you so desire. Mm -hmm. Can you give us the numbers again? Yes, it's uh, three five five nine. Three three zero, and three five five eight nine seven zero. And the other one's eight um eight four three three five four nine three three zero. Right. <laughs> some of the county prefixes are three five five, and some of them are three five four. But that's just an FYI. You know, you you refer them to us, and we'll take care of it. But I know they come to you all sometimes, to ask yeah. you questions, and. I just wanted you to be aware of some of what they need, and you can uh, slightly, somewhat intelligently answer their questions. But if they're confused uh, in, in any way, just give you a call or come by and say you. Yeah, like okay. you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm glad I didn't have to mention that. But I, I, there is a total of, and I encourage members of council, there is a total of 54 um, projects that ha either have not come online yet or either are online currently in terms of funding sources. Now, we may have to go to a different agency to request those fundings as we've done with this. We were not a direct fund county for the housing or for the SC Plus. So we reached out to the state housing group and asked them if they would allow us to have a satellite office here in Williamsburg County, and they agreed. So some of the funding, if you look through the American Rescue Plan Act, you can look down and see through that document what the county, or you can go on the U.S. Department of Treasury's website and look at all of the programs that, are, that can be applied for through the county, through a county. So go on there. Like I said, if something was not mentioned in our projects for Williamsburg County and you want to see something else done, then you can also look at those and say, hey, when this comes available, I would like for us to look at this, that, or the other. So it's a very large, like I said, it's 54 plus projects we can apply for ourselves. Any other questions? Hearing none, we need a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of adjournment, please signify by raising your hand. Opposers, the same. The motion is carried. We are adjourned. Thank you, Williamsburg County citizens and county council members. <laughs>